The theme of today's video is bubbles. Lots of bubbles. Bubbles of all different colors and how we can use them to create a fun painting. A technique from the watercolor world is now going to enter into ours. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. So today, I'm going to be trying something new on this channel. A lot of times what I do to spice up my fluid art experience is I go off on the internet searching for techniques that are done in different forms of art and I try to find a way to incorporate them into fluid art so that we could, like I said, spice up our existence here in this world, right? I mean, you can only do so many Dutch pours and flip cups before you start saying, eh, it's the same thing over and over. I want to take it a little bit further and maybe t turn that Dutch pour into something that looks totally different with that as a background or, or whatever it may be. So I was off doing my research on YouTube and I saw a technique that I used to do years ago in watercoloring, believe it or not. And I said, you know, I wonder if we can take that and use it in fluid art somehow. So today that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you how to take our fluid paints and use them a totally different way than what we're used to using them. I also am going to test this out with paints that have not been thinned down with anything to see, you know, if you want to do this technique and use a color that's not thinned down with Floetrol already or whatever pouring medium you're using. See if we could just use it with a regular paint color. Now I did pick out this green here that is a fluid paint. I'm also going to be testing a tube paint of the same color. So we have a, a fair test, all right, because these are very fluid and a lot of us don't have this fluid type of paint. We have two paints, so I'll bring out one of those as well and test it out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But before we start that, I want to remind everyone, I have a few classes coming up where I'm teaching acrylic pouring, and that is in Connecticut. I think there's one seat left for the Connecticut class, and then I think there's I don't know how many for the Florida class, maybe three or four, but I'm teaching in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida also in April, but I'm also at that Jacksonville class adding on a resin art class. So if you're interested in learning either acrylic pouring or resin art in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, you can send me an email, artbytammy at yahoo.com. If you're interested in learning just acrylic pouring in Connecticut, send me an email, artbytammy at yahoo.com. So what are you going to need to do this technique? You're going to need some paint, whether it be a pre-mixed paint that you have or a tube paint on its own as long as it's acrylic, a fluid paint, any kind of an acrylic paint, any version of an acrylic paint. You're going to need that. You're going to need some water. And you're going to need some Dawn dish soap. Well, let me take that back. Dish soap of any brand is what you need. Okay, it doesn't need to be Dawn. Another thing you're going to need is a cup. Something that has a little bit of size to it, okay? The little Dixie cups, this may be hard to do in because you need to have area for the paint to grow. Yes, growing paint. <laughs> so make sure the cup is of an average size, not a little Dixie cup. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your cup. You're going to take your pre-mixed whatever 
paint you want to use. Again, you can use straight paint out of the, the bottle or tube paint, whatever you want to use. I'm just using the, the paints I have pre-mixed. You're going to take that little, the amount really doesn't matter. Um, it's just that if you put a ton of paint in there, you'll be able to reload this with more water in bubbles afterwards. It'll keep giving you color. Um, but it, if you put a little bit in, it'll just run out quicker. So the amount doesn't matter. I'm going to take the, the dish soap and I'm going to give a nice generous squeeze in there. Okay. The more you add, the more bubbles you're going to get. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, very important, I'm going to mix the two together. Okay, make sure you mix them up good. Just hang with me here. I promise you this is going to be cool. And then you're going to take this over to your sink. I'm not going to film this because my sink is loaded with dishes right now for me being sick, so... I won't do that to you, but anyway, we're going to take this over to the sink. And if you have one of those hoses that pull out the sprayers, those work really well. If not, you can still do it with the running water. Uh, you want to agitate this with water. All right. So you're going to spray water in there until you see this beautiful green foaming in the cup. And this is what it should look like in the cup once you do that, okay? All this nice foam. Now, if you got really big bubbles that form, you can just pop those because they're not going to do anything on the canvas. But you want this like really foamy, foamy kind of foam. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this foam that's in this cup and you're going to... Get a nice, generous scooping of foam out, okay? But what I'm going to tell you to do is kind of move this to the side a little bit. Try to get down to the surface of where the water is because you can see, like, the foam tends to get lighter up here. I want to go, like, I don't want to scoop up water, but I want to just try to get that, um, that darker foam out first or more of it. Because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna use this to put onto the canvas just like this. Okay, just like that. And when this dries, you're gonna see what a cool look you're gonna get. So again, I'm just going in my cup. You can agitate it too by stirring it. It'll create some foam for you. But you just wait until you see this. When you're placing the foam, try to be careful and not move the puddle too much. Let's try the tube paint. Now the tube paint is going to be a little bit different if you use the tube paint on its own. Because it's so thick, you're going to have to slowly add the water and thin it down first to where it's like a fluid paint. So I'll show you how to do that. So just put a wad of paint in the cup and thin it with water first. I would say I would prefer to use just the straight paint versus the pre-mixed paints only because the pre-mixed paints that we have on hand already, they have been thinned down with things like water and Floetrol. So you're not getting the maximum strength of that color. 
versus using it straight out of the bottle or in this case the tube you're starting off with a color that has not been altered in any way so I would prefer to use that but if I don't want to go through this process right here you can use your paints that are already thinned down add some soap to them and then just the water so again with tube paints you want to make sure that you thin them down but when you're doing it just a little bit of water at a time about a quarter of a teaspoon is fine each time so if you're thinning down tube paint the consistency you want to find with this before you go ahead and add the soap to it would be the consistency of one of these fluid paints So something like this, just, you know, it runs off the stick, pretty watery. All right, so I'll go ahead and add some soap to that. Mix them together and then agitate it with water. And now we have this lovely lime green color. So I'll go ahead and scoop some out of my cup and place it over here, maybe. The use of a second stick is very helpful. That was a funny shape. You have to remember, wherever you put this, it's going to make a mark. So you may not want to leave a shape that looks like a penis upside down, <laughs> like I just did. <laughs> now it looks like a turkey. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I hope I don't laugh. I've been so sick. I'm going to start hacking. See this big bubble right here? I don't know if you can see that, but... Big bubbles like that won't survive, so you could pop them if you want. We're going to leave Mr. Turkey there. You may not think it looks like a turkey, but let me show you my view. There you go. It's like there's a leg, here's a leg, here's a leg, there's the butt, there's the neck. <laughs> I'm sorry, I digress. <laughs> anyway, we're going to leave that right there like that. The last thing I want to test out before I move on here is I want to test out glow-in-the-dark paint. Will it work? Because if it does, that will make me very happy. So I am using Alaska Green Glow from Win Modern Art, and they have the strongest glow-in-the-dark paints I've ever seen, and they're not the glow-in-the-dark paints that need the black light to work. They charge by the daylight, so... They're fantastic for that reason alone. They charge during the day and then just light up in your painting at night on the wall. So I'm just going to pour some of this into a cup, add some, some dish soap to it, agitate it, and place it on the canvas. So now the dish soap for the glow-in-the-dark paint looks clear, but that doesn't surprise me with the glow-in-the-dark paint. We cannot judge it until it's dry, okay? So I'm just going to boop that right on the canvas, like so. Again. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm going to make this one the biggest because <laughs> I just want to see. That's all. I don't know what I'm, what kind of shape that is anymore. <laughs> Use your imagination. <laughs> there we go. 
I'm sure somebody will put in the comments, that looks like a leaping frog. <laughs> oh, you remember being little and being a kid and looking at the clouds and trying to make shapes? That's where my mind is going right now. So we're going to let this dry and then I'm going to come back to discuss the results with you and tell you why I think this is awesome. Now let's say you have a painting like I have from last week that I didn't want to throw away because the background was pretty. What if you take something like this and you add these bubbles on top of it and try to create a fun little background? Maybe just place some purple bubbles in certain spots and once it's dry, transform them by painting them into some fancy little fun flowers. I mean, you have to use your imagination with this, but I just thought it was a cool technique that maybe we could use over here in the fluid art world because we do have a lot of these paintings sitting around where they're eh, nothing special and they need a little oomph added to them. So my plan was to try to use this canvas here to create a painting out of it. And um, I had a funny little thing happen that you'll see soon. But anyway, I'm here more to just teach you the technique than to create a painting at this point. So once you apply the mixture to the canvas, you want to make sure to not move it around too much because it does create a staining around it. Now you can use that to your advantage because it makes a nice little outline around the entire area where the bubble leaves its pattern. But typically you just want to place the foam on the canvas and not move it. Just let it sit there, let it dry, and it dries within a couple of hours and then you're going to see what's left behind and it's pretty cool. This is one of those techniques that's really simple to do and a lot of fun. It's something that you would do probably in, in school, you know, but it, it's just, I love the look that it leaves behind. If you are a true lover of mixed media and art, you will love this. Think of a nice Dutch pour that's dry with some beautiful bubble flowers placed along it so that it looks like the Dutch pour is a fancy vine behind your flowers. So you can see already, look at that strong print it's leaving behind. Oh, I love it. It's just so bubbly and fun. <laughs> All right, so everything's dry, bubbles have popped, and I had a total nightmare <laughs> after I shut my camera off. So I did a total of three canvases where I was just plopping the foam on there just to do testing. Now, I'm not trying to make art in this video. The first canvas, I moved and I didn't hold it straight, so the bubbles all went to the side, and I'll show you that one in a minute. The second canvas, I did the same thing again. And then the third canvas, I didn't do that. But what happened was my cat jumped up, hit a lid, knocked it over in the whoosh of air from the lid falling over, whipped my bubbles across the canvas. So what a disaster, all three canvases. But I can still prove my point to you at least. All I wanted to show you was the cool effect that you get using this colored foam, okay? So here we go. You can see here just how, look at how cool that is. I mean, look at that. That is such a cool effect. Now just think of that, right? Think of that on a canvas that you were going to throw away because you didn't like the outcome of it like this one right here. Now this was the one I was trying to place them nicely and the whoosh of air flew the foam over here and oh, what a nightmare. But anyway, 
I could have made a nice painting out of this, right? Had I not, you know, did that. But anyway, just you got to use your imagination. But I mean, it looks so cool. You know, a nice bubbly looking painting, you know, floating bubbles. Of course, you're going to have to add in some paint by hand or whatever. Use your imagination. Turn them into little fun abstract flowers, whatever it may be. But yeah, they ju it just leaves such a fun print behind. So although I just placed the foam in round puddles, you can place it in any type of shape that you want. Use your imagination and just have some fun with it. It's just something different that is simple to do and creates a cool image. Now I tried glow-in-the-dark paint. The glow-in-the-dark paint works great, but you can't see the outline of the bubbles. But this would work great for a background on a galaxy painting, I think. I just, that's my opinion. So anyway, thank you for joining me today. One day I will get to do this again, maybe next week, and make an actual painting. I'll be much more careful and keep my cats out of the room. <laughs> um, you know, they're just, they're curious and it bit me this time. But anyway. Let's talk about another kind of bubble, shall we? The type of bubble that you wash your hair with. So take a look at this magic potion. I wanted to film this for you because I just thought the effects that were going on in this base, it, they were just incredible. Those are micas just dancing along in a shampoo base. That's right. Coming up, along with my other soaps, I'm going to be selling shampoo bars. If you've never seen a shampoo bar, well, you're in for a real treat. Now, the first question people will ask is, will that leave purple in my hair? And the answer is no, it will not. It's just like any other skin safe colorant that is used in products. Now, typically in shampoos, you get them in a white. There are some teal colors like this one here, but it does not transfer into your hair. So these are shampoo bars. You just take one in your palm. You massage your scalp with it. It feels so nice and it creates a ton of bubbles just like shampoo out of a bottle. And it's really, really good for your hair. So I'm going to be selling those also. I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek. Even bars for men, and they smell so good. So make sure you hit that thumbs up. In two weeks, the soap and the shampoo bars will be going on sale, and I'll give you the link on where to buy those. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber on the way out. And check out the description for more information on all of the products that I use. I love you all. Thank you for joining. And until the next time, happy pouring.